Hi guys, welcome back to Anastasia Chorna's show. My name is Anastasia Chorna and today I want to talk to you about something personal. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button because, you know, it helps me. And uh, let's just get to it. As you might have guessed from the title of this video, I want to talk to you about living with epilepsy. Not that many people in my circle, or outside of it especially, know that I am epileptic. My whole life I spend thinking that something is so wrong with me, that I'm going crazy, that I'm the only one who's experiencing something like this, and I spend my whole life in fear of being judged, of being thought of as crazy if I was to open to somebody about this. I feel like it might benefit somebody who's also going through something similar, who's also feeling like they're alone in this. Here's a little bit of a backstory. I was diagnosed with epilepsy and specifically with simple complex seizures in 2015. That was when I officially had to go to the doctor. I'm saying I had to because when I was in the army, during basic training, a very serious epileptic seizure happened to me. I completely passed out. I remember walking into the bathroom with my friends. I remember feeling the aura coming up. It's actually a medical term. I'm not just coming up with some spiritual voodoo stuff. That basically means that you have the strong feeling and you know that something's about to happen whether it is a strong migraine or an epileptic seizure it's something it's like a wave that kind of um, brushes over you and kind of takes you under as I was walking to the bathroom I felt that but because I've experienced that my whole life and I've learned how to hide it from people I just brushed it off and, and kept on going. I remember looking into the stall nearest to me and I, I just remember I leaned in and the next thing I know, I come to on the floor with somebody taking my clothes off. I completely passed out. I, I'm disoriented. I don't know what's happening. I, I can't gather with the thoughts that I had in my head. Somebody's asking me questions and it was a male and I'm confused and I'm disoriented. As I'm slowly coming into my senses, I realize that it is a paramedic. It's taken off my shoes. They had taken taken off my jacket. They told me that I was exper that I was extremely hot. That I was um, I was coming out of an epileptic seizure. It was scary. They were asking me questions, but I could not answer a single question. My friends they told me that I was shaking. I had foam coming out of my mouth. And when they took me to the emergency room. They ran some tests and the test did show that everything was fine, but the only thing that it showed was that there's some kind of an element that stays in your blood and gets produced by your body during an epileptic seizure. I actually spent the following two and a half weeks in the basic training. It was very close to our graduation. Being somewhat of a lab rat, so to speak, but they were running a lot of tests. I would have an MRI, a CAT scan, EKG, all of those tests. I would get them almost every other day and I would have a lot of blood work done, a lot of different tests. They kept on running them, trying to figure out what's wrong with me and what actually caused it. Nothing was wrong and that's why they kept on trying and trying to figure it out. Nothing actually popped up which allowed me to stay in the military because according to the regulations at the time, if you only had one seizure in a year, you are still able to stay in the military. What I have been experiencing my whole life is cold and what I was diagnosed with in 2015 when I went back to see the doctor because I was having a lot of those episodes and I started getting really overwhelmed with them. That is called simple complex seizures. The way I experience the seizures is completely different year after another. They would come to me seasonally. Usually it was spring and fall. I would experience them up to four times a day. If somebody was walking with me or if I was talking to somebody prior 
the episode happening, I would go into this unresponsive state to where I kind of zone out in a way. I would not be able to understand the person of what they are saying. I would not be able to recognize the person. I, I would have a feeling that I know the person, but all of a sudden, I don't know who they are. It wasn't an extended period of time to where it was enough for me to just run to the bathroom, hide it out, wait it out, and then come back to whatever I was doing. That is how I was able to hide it away from people for the longest time ever. I didn't know what was happening to me. The only thing that I knew was that something was wrong and that I was really scared that I was going crazy. If I was to tell somebody about this that I would end up in a mental institution and because I definitely did not want to do that, I hid it from people and by the time I was out of basic training and since I served in the reserves I was at home I actually started experiencing my episodes more and more often it got to the point where when I had them six times a day I was not able to function normally I was not able to do anything really because I was so drained out of the energy I was only able to sleep I would take a nap and I would feel a little bit better, I would get up and then I would have another one and then another one and they wouldn't stop. So it got to the point where I, I couldn't take it anymore and I decided to take the matter into my own hands and actually go to a doctor. I went to see the doctor that was in Houston, Texas and I had a really great doctor back there. She was able to diagnose me pretty fast and I also went to see specialists in the field in 2015 they finalized my diagnosis it was set i have simple complex seizures which is a type of an epilepsy there's one thing that i definitely want to point out if i haven't already i did not decide to make this video to get any kind of tension or get pity from anybody no matter what Karen's out there might be thinking right now. The reason why I wanted to make this video is that I strongly believe that somebody out there might need to feel like they are not alone in this. You are not by yourself in this. We're in this together and that there are more people out there in the world who might be experiencing something extremely similar to what you are experiencing up until summer 2020 when I didn't have a single seizure for a year and a half. It was a breakthrough and it was definitely the longest time that I have ever went without a single seizure in a stretch. I kinda was sitting there hoping that they would never come back, but then 2020 was an extremely stressful year for all of us. I personally went through something that caused me so much stress, caused me so much mental turmoil that I'm not surprised that my seizures are back now. And I since experienced them off and on. They just kind of come and go. Sometimes they stay for a few days. Sometimes I would have only one a day and then I wouldn't have any for a couple of days and then I would have six during the day. Or they would only come to me at night and there's really no way to predict it, which makes it really, really hard and makes the recovery so much harder. I'm not, I'm not talking about all kinds of epilepsy. I'm talking about my personal simple complex seizures and what I experienced because I definitely know how extremely dangerous different types of epilepsy can be. And I know people who have to be on medication all of their lives and that is so much more worse than I experience. I am lucky enough to where I have a choice whether I want to take medication or not. Me paying attention to my personal seizures, to my personal condition and how it hits me on daily basis day to day I have been paying close attention recently to how long they last how long my recovery time is how I feel and what is it that I experience and what is actually happening to my body what I've noticed is that my recovery time is about six hours and I'm talking about headaches I'm talking about tiredness I'm talking about muscle tiredness I'm talking about the brain fog which for me personally that brain static is the worst here are the practices that help me recover faster you've got to find a way to live a stress-free life now I know having a completely stress-free life is pretty much impossible because there's constantly something that's hitting us 
almost on a daily basis and the world that we live in right now is just so overwhelming and you never know what's going to hit you when you turn the next corner. But what you can do is you can learn how to deal with stress much better, how to minimize the amount of time that you actually spent being inside the stressful situation and living through it and recover from any stressful situations faster. You definitely have to figure out what that would be for you. But what really helps me is being out in nature, taking days off where I completely do nothing and spend at least half of that day in nature. I'm talking about going to the beach. I'm talking about going into the forest, hiking, doing some kind of a physical activity without your phone, without any kind of technology, just you and the nature. And that really helped me relieve all the stress, forget about the worries of the world and let any issues go. Meditation definitely helps. I know it's talked about so much, but I feel like it's not talked about enough. <laughs> even meditating for even 10 minutes a day really helps you release the tension that you have inside your head of constantly thinking, constantly troubleshooting and planning and working on to-do lists and all kinds of stuff that our busy lifestyles kind of tell us to do at all times. But it's all about releasing your brain and letting it rest. I also like taking baths. I also started working out more and it really helps your body to release physical tension. And with physical tension, mental tension also goes away. And part of that rest is definitely healthy sleeping patterns. You have to make sure that you sleep enough. We actually sleep in cycles of one and a half hours. So when you're setting up your alarm, make sure that you plan for that. So the best practice would be to sleep either six, seven and a half, or nine hours. If you're having trouble falling asleep, you, there's so many different things that you can do to kind of prepare yourself for the nighttime. And there's different nighttime routines that you can do. Try switching from being on your phone and scrolling through the media or nine gag like some people sometimes do. Try reading a book. Try reading a magazine or just try meditation. I sometimes, when I have trouble falling asleep, I take melatonin pill. Out of the natural remedies out there, there's also valerian root. Right now I'm taking Luna. It's not something that helps you fall asleep, but it is something that helps you kind of stay asleep. I'm definitely not telling you to take any of those. I'm just sharing something that works with me. Also, if you experience seizures in the middle of the day and if you have an ability if you have time to do so taking a nap is definitely something that helps me personally recover from the seizure faster don't set up an alarm and just allow your body to recover whether it takes 10 minutes or an hour and a half and the last thing and the most helpful remedy that i have personally discovered that is helping me tremendously cut my recovery time from an epileptic seizure is this tea. Rune is actually the brand. It is a Gua Yuza Leaf tea. This is not a sponsored video. This is not an ad. This is something that I personally discovered myself a while back. If I don't do anything, it takes me about six hours to recover from a seizure. Well, I timed it. If I drink two cups of this tea after a seizure, I recover completely in 40 minutes. I will link the information on Guayusa itself below. I will also give you guys a link to where I purchased this tea so that you can check out and read more information on this. But this is basically the tea that native Amazonian people have been drinking for generations. It helps you with headaches. It does have caffeine in it. So if you're sensitive to caffeine, it might not be something that is suitable for you. I am extremely sensitive to coffee. That's actually another thing that you might want to consider is not drink coffee. Caffeine that comes from tea is okay, though I do limit myself. I do not take any energy drinks because those are even worse. There's one more thing that I wanted to add to avoiding stress or dealing with stress in your life is that I've learned when to walk away from a stressful situation. Because trust me, no matter what you are experiencing with other people during the day, 
no matter how much they're trying to ruin your life and your day and how much they're trying to pour out that negativity onto you, it's not worth it for you. It's not worth your sanity and your health and your mental well-being to take part in that situation, to engage with that person. I have to come first. I cannot be engaging with stressful situations or dealing with somebody else's problems because you are the only person who can take true care of you and you are the only person out there who is responsible for your own well-being nobody else is it's just up to us to make those choices my health comes first to me and your health comes first to you and it should if you watch this video and there was something that you can relate to if there's something that was helpful in this video for you please don't forget to like this video because that would let me know that it was important and make difference and this is what i want to do i want to make a difference in this world and i want to create a community that is supportive if you're open about this if you're ready to open up about that just leave a comment below let others know that you are also there for them let's support one another thank you for listening thank you for watching this video until the end thank you for being here for me thank you for being here for others and i will see you in the next video i love you guys bye